Hello, my name is Chris Krulin, and today I'll be talking about a lateral ankle fusion plating case. We have a 73-year-old male with ongoing ankle pain and worsening deformity. Based on the patient's deformity, we had a discussion about ankle fusion versus ankle replacement, and the patient chose to proceed with an ankle fusion. Based on the patient's deformity, I chose to place a lateral plate through a lateral incision so I could place that plate at the apex of the deformity. The surgery involved a lateral incision, the distal fibula was then exposed, and then a fibular osteotomy was performed. The fibula was then removed, and because I didn't need a strut graft, I just placed it all in the bone mill and ground it up to have a great source of autograft for my fusion site. Then I exposed the ankle joint and removed any remaining cartilage. I then prepped the joint surfaces and then placed autograft and an orthobiologic protein into the fusion site. I reduced the joint using the mini joint distractor compressor and placed the talus into the medial shoulder of the ankle joint. I held this reduction with K-wires. And when you're placing the medial K-wire, it's important to remember that this can be the K-wire that guides your seven millimeter compression FT headless screw. The screw provides compression medially and gives you another point of fixation outside of the plate. A second K-wire is then placed from the anterolateral tibia. Then I confirmed my reduction with fluoroscopy. I confirmed that I had a plantigrade foot and there was no excessive plantar or dorsiflexion. I evaluated the hind foot to make sure I had zero to five degrees of valgus. And then I confirmed my rotation of the foot and I compared to what I had seen preoperatively with the contralateral foot. I typically align the second toe with the tibial tubercle. Then the plate is placed and held in position with BB tacks. I confirm that the plate is not impinging on the subtalar joint, and then I place that medial screw first. Then a few locking screws are placed into the talus, and then I compress proximally through the compression screw slot. At this point, you can then place the kickstand screw if you desire. Again, here are some more pictures of the plate with all the screws in place, reminding you again to place the medial screw first. This allows for medial base compression and stability while you place your lateral screws and helps prevent any possible distraction that may occur with that lateral compression. At six weeks, the patient had no pain and was weight bearing as tolerated in a cam boot. By six months, the patient was exercising, back to playing golf, and stated that he felt like his life had been restored because he no longer had pain. At one year, the patient continued to do well. And again, these x-rays show no signs of hardware failure and a great fusion mass at the ankle joint. So in summary, the lateral approach allows for an aggressive deformity correction. The lateral plating system provides a stable construct to hold that deformity correction and give you great stability for your fusion. The added stability of the medial place screw is an important technique tip and the seven millimeter compression FT screws are now in the updated ankle fusion system and so you don't have to open up a second tray to get that screw out and use it. And finally, the fibula is a great source of autograph. You can use a portion of it as a strut if needed for your deformity correction, or you can place it all in the bone mill to have a great source of autograph for your fusion site. Thank you.